Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you're all doing well this morning. Oh, that's good stuff. And I, I think I'm having Texas pecan this morning. Good stuff. Well, before I get started this morning, it's it's Veterans Day. And I just want to uh, issue a heartfelt thanks to all the veterans out there. I've got friends who, friends and relatives, and, and I'm sure some of you watching may be veterans. And uh, so just a heartfelt thank you for your service, and I hope you have a good day. So, all right, let's get started here. Uh, the readings this morning, we're going to start off in Isaiah 12, and then we have a reading in Isaiah 59, and then we're going to 2 Thessalonians. So... Isaiah 12, and as always, may God bless the reading of His Word. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. With joy, You will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the peoples, proclaim that His name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for He has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. All right, the next reading. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 through 15. Yeah, 1 through 15, chapter 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden His face from you, so that He does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue mutters wickedness. No one enters suit justly. No one goes to law honestly. They they rely on empty pleas. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and give birth to iniquity. They hatch adder's eggs. They weave the spider's web. He who eats their eggs dies. And from one that is crushed, a viper is hatched. Their webs will not serve as clothing. Men will not cover themselves with what they make. Their works are works of iniquity, and deeds of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their highways. The way of peace they do not know, and there is no justice in their paths. They have made their roads crooked. No one who treads on them knows peace. Therefore, justice is far from us, and righteousness does not overtake us. We hope for light, and behold, darkness, and for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight. Among those in full vigor, we are like dead men. We all growl like bears. We moan and moan like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions have multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities, transgressing and denying the Lord and turning back from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart's uh, heart lying words. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far away, for truth has stumbled in the public squares, and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. The Lord saw it, and, is dis- and it displeased him that there was no justice." Mm. Wow. All right. The New Testament lesson this morning, going to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 through 12. 
We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as, it, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and all the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be, you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted, as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the word of the Lord. All right, we'll go to the Pray Now app and read the prayer of the day. All right, let us pray. Lord God of hosts, your servant Martin, the soldier, embodied the spirit of sacrifice. He became a bishop in your church to defend the Catholic Church. Give us grace to follow in his footsteps, uh, so that when our Lord returns, we may be clothed with the baptis baptismal garment of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. You heard the prayer had mentioned Martin, and you might be thinking Martin Luther, but it's uh, actually Martin of Tours, uh, a pastor. So uh, I'd like to share, it's a very short paragraph. I'd like to share that with you. Uh, Martin of Tours, uh, born into a pagan family in what is now Hungary around AD 316, Martin grew up in Lombardy, it's Italy. Uh, coming to the Christian faith as a young person, he began a career in the Roman army. But sensing a call to, to a church vocation, Martin left the military and became a monk, affirming that he was Christ's soldier. Eventually, Martin was named Bishop of Tours in Western Gaul, which is uh, modern-day France. <clears throat> he is remembered for his simple lifestyle and his determination to share the gospel throughout rural Gaul. Incidentally, on St. Martin's Day in 1483, the one-day-old son of Hans and Margaret Luther was baptized and given the name Martin Luther. Interesting. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day. And once again, veterans, thank you for your service. And I hope you have a fantastic day. So with that, be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow on Coffee and the Word. God bless. Bye-bye.